Hey, everybody on YouTube and Zoom. We'll get started here in about 60 seconds. Really excited to have the Ease family um, on our webinar. So uh, sit tight and we'll be ready in about 45 seconds now. I know that was a quick 15 hey, seconds. Okay, welcome everybody Everybody, to the USA Hockey webinar series presented by BioSteel and Pure Hockey. Excited to have the Eves family on, uh, Mike, Beth, Ben, and Patrick Eves. So pretty much hockey royalty. You know, if it, any, uh, anybody knows Mike and, and Beth, uh, Ben and Patrick are, are a little bit behind Mike on uh, their coaching careers or playing careers. And Patrick currently has been playing in the NHL and Ben is currently coaching youth hockey. And um, just really excited to have all four of you on welcome. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Dave, good to be here. Thank you. So, so we're gonna start something a little different since we have, everybody knows each other. I want you to introduce each other. So first, Patrick, I want you to introduce Ben and then Ben, you're gonna introduce Patrick and then both of you are gonna introduce your parents. Perfect, perfect. Well, uh, Ben is my older brother by two years. Um, he is my best friend. Uh, he's a lefty ping pong player, even though he played hockey righty. So you got to watch out for that. Um, but yeah, we've, um, we're, we've been very close from an early age. We, we moved around a lot with my dad coaching hockey and, um, it was, it was nice to always have your best friend there right away. So, um, we played against each other in the basement and the, in the cul-de-stacks and we played with each other in college. So it was a, a pretty special journey we were able to go through together. And um, yeah, I, um, the person I am today is a, a big reason of, of that is because of Benny. So um, now he is officially called Uncle Benny to my uh, four kids here. And, and um, yeah, so we have, we have a very special relationship. We're a close family. Um, I think my mom and dad fostered that to happen. I mean, not only with the moves, but we were going to be close no matter what. So we still are today. And um, yeah, big bro. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> so, uh, so one little thing, Ben, Ben played at Boston College. He was All-American captain, NCAA winner in 2001, uh, drafted by the Pittsburgh Penguins, but had a, a career professionally for uh, seven seasons in Europe and a few seasons over here in, in the U.S. But um, my memory of Ben is, uh, and you guys when Ohio State played Boston College a couple of times in the, in the NCAA tournament, you guys were just buzzing around and scoring <laughs> goals and all that good stuff. So, Ben, now you're up. All right. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Patrick, uh, known in our family as Ratman. Uh, yeah, he's, he's my baby brother, but like he said, just we grew up together. We were, we were close. We were competitive with each other. We were competitive in everything that we wanted to do and uh, became great friends and best friends through that. And it, uh, it was always fun to have someone to go and play with, and someone to go and challenge you. And being the older brother, and I, I've talked to my mom and dad about this, like Patrick was gifted with so many things that I couldn't do as a kid and it, it never made sense, but I, <laughs> as much as he was chasing me, I was chasing him half the time trying to keep <laughs> up and learn how to hit a golf ball like that or shoot a puck. And it was really fun. Cause I think we both kind of fed off that, but um, yeah, we still talk every day. Uh, it's great to be uncle Benny to, to his kids. And um, no, we're just really, really fortunate that this whole crazy kind of journey is, uh, brought us that much closer as a family and as brothers. And uh, like he said, it's, it's pretty special to have your best friend be your brother. So that's, uh, that's the rat man. <laughs> that's awesome. And, you know, uh, Patrick was first round pick for the Ottawa Senators, uh, had a big run of the Stanley Cup finals in 2007 with Ottawa and scored a career high of 32 goals in the NHL. 
2017, pretty impressive snipes. Learned it all from Ben. We know that. So now, you know, now I want you to introduce your mom and dad. Uh, you want me to go first, Benny? You go first, Rat. Yeah. Okay. I will take mom. Okay. So uh, my mom's name is Beth Eves. Um, yeah, she's just been a, a rock in my life and my brother's. And um, uh, just I think who we are as people was really shaped by my mom and, and um, you know, she had to hold down the fort when my dad was on road trips and, and uh, working uh, all over the place, really. And uh, well, that's just- Another the city and other cities. <laughs> yeah, it was just the way it was. But, or, you know, um, we were fortunate to have a, a rock like, uh, like my mom in our life. And she's always been there to support us. And I've, we talk every day as well. I, we're really tight knit family like that. And um, now she's a, the grandmother to, to my four kids and uh, known as Nana Bean to them. And, and um, yeah, so it's been, it's been great to see how uh, the relationship um, they've grown together is uh, pretty special, just like uh, the, the mother son relationship we have. All right, uh, Dad, I got you here. Um, kind of tough where to start, where to where to kind of take the train, but um, I guess it's just really cool growing up. Like we had, we had you know two parents who really cared about us, and um, and the discipline was instilled at a young age. And school was important, playing sports was important, being a nice kid was important, and um, it started with mom and dad and. Um, now that you're older, you look back and you realize how many fortunate things you had in your life and whether it was just, you know, food on the table or, you know, new pair of skates or hockey sticks or a rink in the backyard or whoever that was. But, um, I guess despite, or because of all the amazing things, uh, the, the journey as a hockey player and as a hockey coach, like just as a son, it was, it was always fun that we were always playing games and that we were always together and, um, and then as you're older and you look back and it's like, Oh, geez, dad, like you scored a lot of points in college, like, like a, a silly amount of points, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you had a pretty good NHL career. Like your card was worth 25 cents. <laughs> we used to say it was a common, we used to give you a hard time and like, I don't have a card that's worth 25 cents. Like I didn't do all that. <laughs> so no, it's been fun. It's been really cool to just see the journey as an adult now and kind of look back and, and appreciate different things. And coaching at different levels at different times for different reasons. Um, but always knowing that, you know, our family was always, you know, the, the number one priority and, and things would kind of revolve around that. So um, yeah, player, coach, dad, like super fortunate to again, have another best friend at this age and we share stuff and we challenge each other. And um, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's really fun to, you know, have a dad you want to be with and a dad you're proud of. So um yeah, I don't know if that was it or not, but that's that's what I needed to say. Yeah, that's really good, and I can I can throw in all the accolades now for you. You know, <laughs> good. So yeah, Mike had a, a great career playing in college, but also playing professionally and coached at many different levels: NHL, NCAA, uh, our World Junior team, coaching his son Patrick um, for a gold medal, and then also the U.S. National Program, and had stops with the Division Three. Uh, a couple years ago and then now is the Cleveland Monsters um, head coach so that's really exciting and just just want to Mike and Beth can you just talk about how you know with uh, Ben talked about having family first and you know hockey second how did you set that up and what was kind of going through your mind of being parents for that you know with hockey so important in your lives well, I will, I, I'm going to jump in first, kind of set Bethy up here, because w as far as that aspect, uh, you know, we, we were in a position where we, we made a decision that Bethy, if possible, would stay at home and, and be with the kids. And that was, uh, we, we were blessed enough to be in that position to be able to do that. And uh, I mean, there's so many stories, but, but Bethy was a rock at home. And I think the boys know this story. When we were in, in Hershey in the American Hockey League, you know, in the American Hockey League, there's a dozen nights throughout the year. You're getting back at 4.30, 5 o'clock after a bus ride home, after playing three games and three nights. And I would come home and I would wake the family up. Bethy and I would get the boys dressed. You guys were about squirts, weren't you? Squirts? 
eight, eight, nine. Yeah. Seven and 10, seven and nine, something like that. And uh, <laughs> we put all their stuff on except for their helmet and we would get, get them in the van. We had a conversion van, strap them in the, in the captain's seats and Bethy would leave and drive to meet the other dads at the Kmart and go like to Baltimore or somewhere like that to play a game at seven o'clock Sunday morning. You know, I mean, that was, that's an example of just, she was there. She did those kind of things. She was many times the only mom there, the other dads, you know, uh, they, they, were, they were able to be there. I wasn't, but Bethy was that, that backbone of, of, of stuff like that in our family that carried, we could sit here for the whole hour and talk about this stuff, but, uh, she was that for us and it was the boys know, I mean, heck, we, we lived apart for two and a half years. I was in Pittsburgh uh, with the Penguins and we had just left Finland. Uh, we had a two year deal after one year, the school just wasn't work out. So we had been at Shattuck. The, we decided to send Bethy and the boys back to Shattuck so they could finish. And uh, I was going to stay in Finland, ended up in Pittsburgh and again, she was a dorm mom in a male dorm with 90 boys. I mean, you know, she did that. It was, uh, you know, she was the first woman dorm parent in a boy's dorm there. I mean, that, that's another story in itself, but she's always been that backbone. So that, that's a little introduction and I'll have you piggyback off that if you want. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we've had we've had great fun yeah. through these escapades, and and I, I think it, it brought us uh, close as a family because we were always together on these treks. At least the boys and I were, and um, we had fun. I mean, man, we had fun. We met great people along the way. Um, uh, the Giantas, um, the Stewarts. Uh, the McDonald's, um, just great people along the way that really enhanced this whole journey. Um, so it was just all, it was fun. Yeah. And it probably wasn't easy. I don't know. I never thought about it at the time. It just, we were having a good time. So it seemed like a thing to do. <laughs> that, that's awesome. And you talked about your time, one at Shattuck and one in Finland. Can you talk about both of those times and, you know, what was your experiences for all of you? So maybe Mike, you start kind of set the table what what was at Shattuck and then we can go from there yeah it'd be what what's fun about doing this is to hear the boys perspective because you're going to hear what we thought as growing ups but then to hear the boys and we've kind of talked about a little bit but we had been we had been uh with the Philadelphia Flyers for six years and then uh they weren't going to hire us back and we ended up deciding to make a decision the family go to Shattuck Craig Norwich was there at the time we had been teammates at uh, Wisconsin and had open positions, so we decided to go there. We had actually worked some summer schools with Grant Stanbrook there, so we knew the school a little bit. So we decided we'd head there. So we'd been there two years. Boys just loved it. I mean, we lived in this little cabin that was uh, 100 yards from the rink, 50 yards from the tennis courts, 75 yards to the school. The older guys would come and get them and play with everything. It was like heaven for a kid. And uh, then one day I got a call from Billy Zito, who ended up being the boys representative uh, uh, as a player agent. And he asked, uh, he had a good buddy named Yarmo Kekalainen that was going to be the GM of a team and pro team in Finland. He wanted an American coach and if uh, would be interested. I said, Billy, we just been here a couple of years. Kids are having a great time. I think we're good. So at dinner that night at the cafeteria, I was explaining this to Bethy and she goes, What? a chance to travel abroad and play. What a great opportunity. You got to call him back. We're and gone. I was, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What about, no, we're gone. <laughs> well, I got on the phone the next day and uh, talked to Billy. Then that started the process. Um, and we ended up going over there for, uh, for a year, uh, perhaps again, as Bethy said, maybe one of the hardest years we've ever had, but one of the greatest awesome. years we ever had. It so. was awesome. So. You, you wanna... Yeah, no, you nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> it was very, it was hard. The language was hard at that time. Um, not many people spoke English. And if they did, it was very short um, conversations. Hello, how are you? I am fine. It's since, of course, changed. Um, so it was very different. And we, we come home, the four of us would come home at the end of the day and laugh about all the dumb things that we did that are perfectly normal here, not a part of their culture at all. 
So we'd laugh about the dumb things we did today, you know? It, it, again, it was another great bonding experience. And the boys, I know, had a ball. Ben, ben do you want to share your experiences? One at Shattuck, and then uh, we, can, we can go to Finland after that. Yeah, we were talking when we were kids at Shattuck. You know, I was at the middle school, and, and Patrick was <laughs> in the Fairbow Public Elementary School, I think, right down the street. But... <laughs> Well, yeah, we, we grew up at a neat time where like, yeah, the older kids wanted to play with us. They would pick us up, put us on their shoulders and we'd go off and play roller hockey with them or, you know, go on the ice and do skills or go to the dining hall. And some of these guys went on to play division one college. Some of these guys went on to be lawyers, but they were all just like larger than life, like big brothers. And I was like, oh, wow. Like that was normal for us. Like that, that's not normal for, for kids. And so we had keys to the ice rink. We had, we had keys to everything. We could just play. And so we were super fortunate there. I think the house we lived in had rats in the basement, and <laughs> mold, and like all that stuff. And like none of us, or at least me and Patrick, could have cared less because yeah. it, it would put us in the epicenter of fun and play and just opportunities to, you know, kind of start to become like a, a young man. But yeah, that was special. And then, you know, flip it on its head, you know, going to Finland was the first six months for me and I know Patrick will have his own thoughts but it was you know still to this day you know the hardest thing that um I've ever done and like had to survive almost you know um again everyone has a different like rock bottom experience but just when you like especially as a teenager and you're just like you're just struggling like you don't know if you're going to be able to get through it like some dark dark times and um, but it was good. If you survive it, it's a good thing. And, and once with the help of, of these three surviving that, but, I didn't but, want to leave. Well, no. I think too, Ben, the reason it was dark is because as a teenager, the kids wouldn't talk to him. Yeah. Because if you said something that wasn't proper English, then you were afraid that the other kids are all going to laugh at you. So nobody talked to him for like six <laughs> months. That That's what made it so yeah. difficult you know you're in a locker room nobody's talking to you you know just lonely of- like it, it was it was good it was a perspective the darkest winners you'll ever see yeah. so lonely you got you walk into a room it goes quiet in the locker room <laughs> it's like you're 13 you don't know what to think but then you know eventually they warmed up and I could I was lucky to be able to play hockey well where I was you know it's good it helps you make friends when you do something well and so but no, we used to take the tram and the subway to our Finnish English school, me and Patrick. Some days we'd accidentally get lost, Dave, and we end up at a Kisa Holly, a sports hall. We <laughs> play ping pong for an hour, then we go watch dad's practice for the rest of the day. And um, no, it was great. Again, it's one of those things where sometimes the hard is what makes it really special if you are able to get through that. And still have friends that I talk to this day. And I think from a development standpoint, on and off the ice. Again, we, we won the lottery with that year and, um, you know, from style of play to development of what the drills and skills we were learning on the ice as 13 and 11 year old with the fins. I mean, it was, it's just out of this world and uh, so difficult, but on the other side of it, like, wow, that was, that was something really special. So those, those are my experiences, Rat. Yeah, no, that was, that was great. I mean, like all three have said that the the Shattuck experience was wonderful um just because it was a giant playground and <laughs> um for me I mean I I just had a blast there like I I we'd go skate and then we leave and then I go play tennis with the girls tennis team and they let me jump out there with them and then you just it, yeah and then I would jump on the ice with dad's team his midget team at during their practice and move pucks around and then it, it was just a, it was just a wonderful experience and um it was yeah it was something i'll never forget but benny and i just ran around and played it was just a giant playground that's all it was to us and um that was the first house we ever had our own rooms too so i think that's why we didn't care about the rats and all that stuff but that was pretty cool <laughs> but yeah so uh, and w- was that the year we played for Fairbo? together or were you on the shadow one of those years yeah yeah one of those years there yeah yeah we had great great teams i mean we had a bunch of kids that went on to play division one college from a small farm town and uh i mean to this day we are i think our peewee team we still keep in touch with 
So um, it was it was just an overall wonderful experience. And um, then we got to hang out with the, with the older guys. And I just remember I, they, we'd play roller hockey and I'd be the goalie because I wasn't very big at 10. But they'd put me on the shoulder. They'd rollerblade like a mile over to the, the middle school and just throw me in net. So I was in heaven playing with all the older kids. And then, um, then we went over to Finland, and I think it was the flight over there. I, weren't we in the non-smoking section? <laughs> but it was like right in front of the smoking section. They were like blowing like smoke over us. You remember that? <laughs> oh, I was like, man, this is a tough section to be in. It was in the back of the plane. Yeah, I still remember that. So we got we got off like what an eight-hour flight, smelling like a bar. And then it was like, okay, where do we go next? And jet lagged. And I think right away, Benny, didn't you have to go to like a training camp like the next day when we got there? So they, so Benny and I got split up, which was, that was hard because he went up north, I think, for a, the, the team camp. And then I was the next week after that. So the first two weeks were, you know, we were very out of our comfort zone. Um, but it was just a wonderful experience looking back on it. But right away, yeah, it was it was tough. Um, I, I'd say that's we we became very close then. I think that was like a, a huge transition or not transition, but like a huge year for us because we were all we, we had, and and we would hang out all the time. And like Benny said, we would, you know, we'd <laughs> we'd go on the tram and we end up at some like playing those slot machines. <laughs> Gas station. David, we're just learning about this now. This is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh, we show up to dad's practice at like noon, and he's like, oh, "Don't you guys have school?" And we're like, "Oh, they let us out early." Like we didn't know what we're doing. We, so it it was a great experience. But I'd say hockey wise, it was um, yeah, at least for me, it kind of changed my trajectory of of play. Like they were their skill development. I mean every. I remember they needed to even have goalie coaches for the play. Like that was not every team had their own goalie coach, which was crazy. mid nineties youth hockey goalie. Yeah, coach. like that was on. I remember I was like, "Is that the goalie coach out here?" Like, <laughs> when did they get those? But it was just it was fun. Like, and I, I had great coaches, so I was very lucky. You know, they'd go up, do the drill on the board, and finish, and then he'd come over and be like, "Patty, get in the back line." But this is kind of the gist. Of it. Go, oh, okay. So it was it was. Um, it was great because I, I think it then replicated when I turned pro for the first time. Like it was a whole new language once you turn pro from the college game. And, and my dad, I remember right before training camp said, you know, keep your mouth shut and your ears and eyes open. Like that, that was the one thing I remember you said to me before my first training camp. And, uh, and I was like, well, I kind of did that in Finland just because <laughs> we couldn't communicate with anybody. Um, but uh, you know, for me, I, I was at a younger age where the kids didn't feel awkward to mess up trying to talk to me. So I had a different experience in the locker room than Benny where they were all just silent. And they're, um, Finns are silent until you get to know them. That's just kind of how they are. And, and then once you're in, you're in. I mean, we, they're just the greatest group of people, but um, they're shy at first. And I totally get that. But I, I, I had a great experience with, with the team I was on and um yeah the, we were just a goofy bunch of 11 year old kids who like we, it was yeah we, it was just a fun time for me but I remember what was it like Wednesday nights mom didn't we have to like drive like all around town yeah to we get... drove yeah we drove um P Island yeah which the rink was in a, a old uh ship hangar yeah. and then we drive to the other side of Helsinki and I forget the name of that rink, but we had to drive the whole city like twice yeah. in one night. And this is you know, a major European city. You don't know where you're going or we figured it out, but that yeah, was there it. wasn't like ways or anything back then. <laughs> yes. I mean, we were just like, oh. they, they, they were fine. They had to go to rinks that were in bomb shelters. That were flying yeah. down in the bomb shelters and stuff. They're like, there's the rink. And we're like, what do you mean there's the rink? It's like an <laughs> elevator shaft. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> there. Like, no. And then all of a sudden you're in like you're going down and you got your hockey bag on. You're like, well, here we go. All right. So it was it was it was a great experience though. But I, I would say uh, not only brother wise, but hockey wise, it it 
change the trajectory of of my game i mean they were they were physical they were skilled they there was development wise it was wonderful for us and uh, so i think that kind of kick-started everything and then we went back to shattuck after that and kind of brought those things back with us um but um, but we've, I mean, we tried everything. Remember we were on the bandy team? <laughs> so they, well, they, well, it's this, uh, bandy. So it's supposed to be played out on like a soccer field, a flooded soccer field. And it's all skating. And I was like, Oh, like, so let's keep it in a rink. You know, I need <laughs> parameters here. So we ended up joining the school bandy team. And so they give you these sticks that are like maybe up to your waist with these like little blades on them and this hard rubber ball. And you just wear the bottom half of your gear. And that, uh, we went to like the championship or something. <laughs> we won? Did we win that? Oh, yeah. I remember. We <laughs> and we're like, we don't even know what we're doing out there. We're, they're just like, just go score. <laughs> you know? So we did. And then, uh, and then I ended up joining like the Sally Bandy team, which was like the gym version of that. Remember those little plastic sticks? So we just tried everything because we were so far out of our comfort zone. It was like, why not? Like, David, first, David, there's there's a common denominator here. If you if you think about Shattuck and, and in Finland, it was it was about having fun. Fun is a common denominator, no matter what we did. And and, and I'll finish this part if if, if you want to keep going on. There, we lived in this two bedroom apartment, and 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 in the middle was a courtyard, and there was two poles, and they were they were for badminton, and but they didn't have the net up, so we had some. The, the Sally Bandy sticks, the little plastic sticks and a, and a, and a wiffle ball. ball. And we would, we, we made up a, a game called ping ball. So we would play one-on-one. -on -one. It would be me against Ben. Raddy would be the, he would be resting. And the idea was you had to get up close near the pole and, and you shoot the, the wiffle ball. And if the ball hit the pole, it made a ping sound. And that's when you know you scored. So we'd play up to three and then we'd rotate in. Oh, and people yeah. in the apartments are looking out of their windows at us. What are those crazy Americans doing down there? <laughs> but we would scream and laugh. And but that happened at Shattuck and in Finland and going back. It was always about the fun in, in, in growing up with these boys. Well, that was that was your thing, Dad. Like yeah. everything was a game. I mean, we, last time you were out here, <laughs> we we're in the garage, and your mom. How old's Gams? Eighty-five. Yeah. And then th three of my kids, we, <laughs> you were all playing some bounce game in the garage. Oh like, my gosh, I remember that. Like everything is a game with my dad. So you yeah. don't even know you're like working on anything. And that's how he basically taught us hockey was these small games. And uh, like, it, it doesn't just stop at the rink. Like <laughs> what, what's your game when you walk into your cabin with your hat every time? Oh, uh, who told you about that? Well, you were showing me the other day. Uh, <laughs> Everything is a game to you. It's so, right. Dave, you know, you got three hooks in behind the door. So I'm about three yards away and I take my hat and I throw it. And I try to land it on the hook. I'm pretty oh. good at it, Dave. Like if there was a pro sport, I might be able to be somebody there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's everything, though, Dad. So it was all fun because everything was a game. Yeah, it was. That was our childhood was just small games. And it didn't matter if it was mini sticks to uh, capture or your or what capture the dragon on the ice with uh, we had names for everything how about how about this one david so we had a we had a cul-de-sac in hershey and my uh, my mom was about oh. uh, maybe 70 then and we had a we had a net out there and we had the our we had a great big golden and uh, she would play with us too and we would play two on one and my my mom would play the boys gave her the nickname of the hacker because if the boys took the ball from her she'd slash them <laughs> she right on the hand. The ball back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so pick up your pads. stick. Pick up your stick. You know, <laughs> like, stop it crying. Oh god. Yeah. Um, anyway. anyway. So, Mike, yeah. how does that uh, transition into your practice design when you're practicing um, with your teams, no matter what level? How you know? I'm sure it comes is a big part of it. You know, I, I think it is. I it's, it's and, and the one thing about going back to pro this past year that was an eye opener again after being in college for 17 years was that you forget how competitive they are. Like this is their job. 
it's not like they have school where they have to give energy to school to test to exams like this is their job this is the most important thing of the day and they are very competitive like so at the end of practice if we if we weren't playing three games in three nights it was always a small area game and uh when i was in school my major was kinesiology back then physical education and uh one of the things i remember in a very basic class was the instructor said always stop the game before right at the peak when the guys are enjoying it so they want to do it when they come back so when we play these smaller games they get going and you know guys always say oh one more minute coach no no we're done right now because you want them hungry when you come back but yeah e even at the, at the pro level like they want to have fun there they, and they have fun when they compete against each other and so it's still a big part of what we try to do yeah, that's interesting. H have you always been like that from, you know, even coaching, whether it's at yeah. Wisconsin or, or, or that, that's cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I I wanted... think... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you go. No. So I wanted to bring up your time at the um, U S national program coaching Patrick and your experience there and how that took place. And, you know, just what that was all about. I know um, I was talking to Ken Martell today kind of a little bit about that. And he, he said to say hi to everybody, but. Uh, good, good, bring yeah. him back. <laughs> so uh, your time at the U.S. National Program. The boys have heard this story, I think, and maybe when I'm done, they can pipe up. Uh, it, it, and Bethy and I have talked about this. We never really wanted to coach the boys growing up. I, it's a very difficult situation um, on, on both sides. You know, you as a coach and people looking at it, I think, you as a coach, you can't separate separate yourself emotionally. This is your child, you know, and no matter how good they are, I think on the other side, you're always, people always feel that you're going to favor them. So uh, the one year that uh, I got to coach Patrick was his senior year of high school, which was uh, his last year at the National Development Program in Ann Arbor. And we sat down, actually, Mark Stewart lived with us. Mark's part of our adopted family. And uh, we, we made three rules up. And those three rules were, we will never talk about hockey at home unless you bring it up. The second one was on the bench during the course of the game. Uh, John Hines was our coach then. Hinesy will give you feedback. And then the third thing was that I will hold you accountable two to three times a year in front of your teammates. So they know that you're not off limits. So they knew that when I was doing that, it was done very much with awareness. So, um, so we had those rules and it, at least from my perspective, uh, I thought it went pretty well. I think you're going to have to ask Patrick, but we didn't have any major blowups. Uh, I, 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 I thought all in all, it went pretty well. It always helps when you win. Although we won the big prize that year, but the course of that season, we got beat a lot. Oh. You know, you were playing guys that are 24 years old and these guys are 18, the college teams we played. So what do you think, Pat? Uh, do you think it went pretty well? Yeah, looking back, I, I thought it went great. Um, obviously, it's it's a little weird when your dad's ahead of the program and um, and then ha having to hold your friends accountable. I guess that, that, that was a little weird, but uh, I was very lucky Marky was with us. I mean, yeah. him and I could, um, like we said, he's part of our adopted family. So we lived it together. So I wasn't on my own. So that, I think that was a big thing. And, um, but yeah, it was, um, I mean, that year it, 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 everything kind of ramps up. I mean, everyone's starting to talk about their future and, and, and going to college, getting scholarships. Like there's some big things on the line. And um, I just think the habits that uh, Heinze and my dad instilled in our group and uh, not only on the ice, but off the ice as well, uh, really helped, but I, I would say Heinze was probably our, our saving grace to where it, so it didn't have to get weird. He was, and he's as honest as it comes, but he had a, him and I had a great relationship and, uh, I learned a ton from him. So, um, yeah, I think that was great. Great that we had that buffer, I guess. And then at home, we never, I mean, dinner table was all about school and social stuff. And, um, but yeah, it was, it was also a trying year because we were losing a lot during the year too. You know, you know, as much as, uh, you know, we, we were, we had a good team and we were still, but we were playing D one top 
I mean, we, I remember we went into St. Cloud, they were ranked number one in the country. And it was like, the heck's going on? We're playing these big time teams. So we lost a lot during the year, but then in the end, we, we ended up winning the under 18 and that kind of was a uh, icing on the cake, but um, no, it was, it was, it was good. I, I don't look back on it and think we should have did this differently or that differently. It was, it was a great experience. You know, it's kind of interesting as you guys talk about that, like in between the lines from my perspective, you know, having been at the younger ages again, trying to understand where youth hockey is and AAA hockey is in the U S like you said you were 18 and you guys were just starting to talk about your future and you were talking about, geez, maybe college is a thing. Yeah. And like, I didn't, I don't think we hired Billy Zito as our agent until your freshman year of college. Like, like the, just the, what I've seen Dave over the last couple of years is the, you know, everything's accelerated so quickly. And the fact that Patrick is a first round draft pick is a 13 year NHL or was just starting to think about like, maybe I'll talk to an agent or what colleges should I look at? You know, when you're 18 years old, like I, I feel poorly for a lot of kids who are accelerating in that whole realm of it instead of enjoying the game, getting better at the game, like having fun with your teammates and really pushing yourself. And just for me and listening to you talk there, Rat, like that's pretty cool. Like we, you didn't have that pressure. Right? Like people didn't have the pressures that kids do today. You could just focus on the game and learn lessons and that stuff will be there afterwards, you know? Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I, I started to cut in and, and kind of move back a little before we went out to the U S program, we were at Shattuck and looking back on it. And uh, so you, what was it? You went freshman year to graduate or sophomore year and graduate there, Benny. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Sophomore. Yeah. Junior, senior. Yeah. And then I was eight, nine, 10 there, but the rule at the school. And I, I think it's great now is like once hockey season was over, you had to do something else. And it was, uh, it wasn't, and it was like, what did we, we did the play one year and then a different year. We were, we, we were number one doubles tennis. And then we did golf another year. And I just, cross think country, that, you gr somebody ran cross Benny country. Ran, uh, not me. That was Ben. Uh, yeah. But that, that's so important though. And, and I guess we didn't, uh, we didn't do hockey all year round until we went to the U S program because it was the full year then. Yeah. But I just think that's so important to do other things, like to develop as a per like that play was like the scariest thing I've ever done. And I think I had one line and it was like an <laughs> insignificant line, but to be up on stage was just like, Holy smokes. Like I am out of my comfort zone right now. Really? And then you right. And I, and I think to go to Ben's point where everything's like specialized at a young age and everything's accelerated now where I think those rules at Chaddock there were great and some, and, and it helped, helped develop me as a person, I guess. And, and, and I look at that now as my oldest is nine. Um, you know, they're starting to want to have you commit all year round. And I was like, whoa, 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 this is like, she's nine years old. And, you know, I, I want her to do other things. So I guess I would rather have her do a lower level so she can do different, more things. Or, Different thing. Right, right. I was gonna say, and that was a, a family priority too. Like, yeah, we, we don't look at ourselves as a hockey family. I mean, the boys did everything under the sun. I mean, from karate to oh, everything you name it, they did it. Piano lessons, everything. But that, in our minds, that was important. It wasn't like, oh, we are just going to do hockey because your dad does hockey. It was like, no, we're doing everything. See what you like, what tweaks you, what excites you. Um, and I think you become more well-rounded. Uh, I, I, like, I feel really strongly about that. And that was a, a priority with our family. Do as much as you can and have fun. David, the reality of it is in this day and age, like when I grew up, three three sport athletes was common and, and and the reality of it that's you can't do that anymore you 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 you're very fortunate i, I think you need to do the, the minimum you need to do is two sports do your hockey and then do something that complements that whether it's lacrosse golf something in the off season tennis because the reality is 
that's probably not going to happen. The, the fact that you can be a three sport athlete, unless you go to a prep school or something like that, but you've got to have something else. We always use the analogy, you know, you, you have a plant that you're taking care of. You water the plant. You can't water it all the time. It'll drown. It, it, it needs time to absorb what's going on. You need to get away from the sport that you think you love and keep that passion by, by doing something else and coming back to it. And that's the reality of the society that we live in right now, I think. That's such an important point and such a, you know, for people to understand, we've had uh, doctors talk about early specialization, but you know, like the, the message, right? Like is play as many sports as you possibly can be involved, be in a play. That was like, I don't know if you you want to tell your NHL buddies, Patrick, about all the play and the piano, you might get, you know, that might be a little tough in the corners or something. Um, so, but uh, no, but those are all great things. And, you know, it really shows, you know, why, what made you become, you know, not just great people, but also you're a great players at Boston college or, you know, down the line because of all those outside things that you did, you know, and that's what we want. How do you think this whole, you know, we're in the middle of COVID, you know, about kids not playing. How do you think, you know, as a parent, what would you suggest to, you know, those players that haven't skated in four months and coming back from, from all of this, you know, how would you guide them? Maybe Mike. Uh, I think that first of all, you've got to take into account what, what can I do that doesn't get me in danger of getting sick, you know, from, from COVID-19 and, you know, it's funny that this happens to be part of our family, but ping pong is the perfect sport. You know, you can you can play ping pong and work on your eye hand coordination um, and you can play left handed. You can uh, you know, there, there's a bunch of things you can do. We, we, I mean, it's so silly to the point where we actually play ping pong where you're allowed to have it bounce one time off the floor to get it back on the table. Now you're starting to get into aerobic you're like you keep it going. So stuff like that, juggling, I think you have to take a look at what are the sports or what are the activities. But I think a big piece of that is if you can keep your mindset in the aspect of, of being in a competitive situation, like, uh, you know, it's interesting to, if you, we have a ping pong table in, in our, in our locker room uh, with the monsters. And even I like to go down and watch the guys play because you can see the mindset of guys when guys aren't playing well and, how they get ticked off of themselves, their, their self-talk and how they react. Like you're going to do the exact same thing in a game, in a hockey game. So I kind of almost get a, an inside view of where they are with their mindset. So, but to stay in that competitive situation, like just find something that's competitive that you can do in the environment that we're in. And that'll help you be ready that when you come back and you can compete, that your mind is already there. Plus you've worked on some eye hand coordination stuff. What do you guys think? It'd be interesting to hear your perspective. I've been running <laughs> and a lot of hockey players are horrible runners. I, I used to be one of them, but um, just to get outside to get like, you know, some of the, the rust off of just being in and feeling cooped up with the virus running's hard. <laughs> like it's, it's a horrible experience. <laughs> and like doing intervals and doing hill sprints, like you can develop leg power, you can stay lean, you can, you know, do different things. So when you do get back on the ice, you know, your groins and everything else are in a little better place and you don't have an extra, you know, five, six pounds you're carrying around for tryout camp. So I forgot how much I enjoy and how hard running is, but it's still a great tool if you can't get on the ice, I think. Yeah, just to add on to that, I, I think it's great for some of these kids to get this break, you know, it's um it'll be exciting to get back out on the ice you're not going to be dragging and be like here we go again like it's like wait we can go now all right let's go you know and, and i think that refreshness is going to be um great for development because if, if you're dialed in and ready to go you get so much more out of it you you know you need an hour of dialed in stuff to get three hours of just kind of loafing around out there so I think it's a great time for that. And then also I would go ahead and say, um, you know, you have, you have time to go on YouTube and check out your favorite players and see what they're working on and, and you know, see highlights of them. Okay. what they like, how did they find this space? Or, you know, I, I think it's a time. So 
not only will you be refreshed, but then you'll have stuff to work on right away when you get back out there. Let's say you didn't have the time to, you know, between school and, and hockey or whatever you're doing, you didn't have time to kind of do your research, if you will. Um, so those are, those are the two points I would add to. But yeah, you know, with Benny, you're out there, you're doing, you're outside in the fresh air, which is great. And our sport doesn't allow that, but you're out there doing something hard. And, uh, you know, our sport is hard, so you don't lose that. And then, you know, with dad, he, it's all about competing. So um, you can compete in anything. I mean, we were playing, what, the king ball, and those are pretty heat. I broke a couple sticks over, <laughs> over the, over the no, pole, no, you know, right. you're, you're competing. So, I mean, you can compete in anything. We, uh, uh, we compete pretty hard in the card game Uno. So we had to outlaw that from our family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah so it, it, it's a time to kind of I don't know you can roadmap some other things out in your life and now that you have a little time uh, so we have a question did you play finished baseball when you were over there and I don't even know what finished baseball is did we do that then? the only thing I remember Dave we did it in school you run to third base first <laughs> that's the only thing I remember there's a home plate someone throws a ball and you actually run to third and like we, a couple Americans in the school, we were all sorts of confused, but that's the only thing I remember about it, but we played it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so Mike, I wanna talk a little bit about the mental side of the game and you know how you're approaching your team, team building, but also how you approach your players. And uh, Ben, talk to me a little bit about, you know, how important the six inches between your ears are. Can, yeah. you, can you chat about that a little bit? Well, I, I think ultimately, um, you know, you, you take a look at the game, whether it's hockey or whether it's tennis or golf, like I, I tell our guys, I, I particularly like to watch tennis uh, and, and watch those athletes compete because they, they, you can't hide. You, you can see where their mindset is and you can tell the guys or the women that are in control, those six inches between the ears, we actually, when we were at St. Olaf with our boys there, we Ben and I wrote a paper called the six inches between your ears, ears will determine the performance of the six feet below your ears, because it, it's this year that is ultimately going to make the difference in the game there. The, um, the, the physical capabilities, the conditioning, but when push comes to shove, how do you handle those moments in competition where it's, terse it's tight things haven't gone well there's been a bad call all those things that your mind controls that ultimately the uh, the team that the players that do the best in that are going to find a way to win and we, we talk about it quite a bit uh with our guys because it is that important and it's it's not the first time that our pro guys have heard it but we we have it front and center and we want to make sure that we're that we're taking steps to grow in that. And when we have individual meetings with their guys, we, we talk about that as well and get down to their nitty gritty. Like, how do you feel you do in these situations from a mindset standpoint? So ultimately I think it becomes the ultimate weapon. If you can get on top of that and control the, the way you think, control your emotions, whether it's, you know, and, and it's something that becomes lifelong. Uh, you can take that out of your environment as a hockey player and, and take it home with your marriage or your children. And Pat's got four of them right now. And you know, like you got to take a step back. Like a referee made a bad call. Your kid's done a dumb thing. Like, well, I got to take a breath here and how, how are we going to handle this? You know? So uh, it, it, it's a skill that you can learn through sports that, but will help you in life as well. Ben, uh, I know you, you were coaching youth hockey the last couple of years. How do you try to instill that within those younger players? This is a tough well, it's, one. It's <laughs> actually funny because like at each, like, you know, at a, a 16 year old is different than an 18 year old, you know, being at Miami university, like, like the college kids have their own mental challenges. And it was actually been fascinating to go through, you know, from division one, division three, down to, you know, 18, 16 and, and just try to meet them where they're at in their whole emotional, mental, you know, spiritual development. But the thing that I found with the 18 year olds this year, 17, 18 year olds is um, like they, they, they have zero emotional control. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to figure themselves out. They're still growing. There's girls, there's school. 
there's everything, but, but their self-talk is, is horrifying. Uh, they don't know how to calm themselves down. And when something goes bad, there's usually a response that is 100% negative. And just to create awareness around that, um, you know, sometimes this year I was putting an arm around a kid and saying, hey, like, like, you get another shift. Like, this isn't pro hockey. I'm not benching you for doing that. I, we need to learn from this. Another time it's grabbing a kid and saying, hey, if you slam your stick one more time, like, you're done for today. You're going to the shower. And it just kind of it jolts them, you know, but they, they have all these wild emotions. It's like a wild horse. And until you actually learn how to control it and tame it, it can be your best friend and your worst enemy. But it's just fun to just introduce stuff. And, you know, we've always talked about just planting seeds and you never know when they're going to sprout. You never know if and when a tree is going to grow. But you just try to, for me, you just try to be a positive just enforcement of, hey, this is all part of it. This is what all athletes have to go through. And this is going to decide whether you go to the next level or you don't. I promise you that. And so the awareness was key. And then just the repetition of um, just paying attention to them and knowing that they're suffering and then trying to help them navigate through that a little bit better. Patrick, do you have anything to add on your experiences playing now at the NHL, but with your young, young kids and how you wrap that all, all together? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, we raise them all the same, but their wiring's all different on the inside. <laughs> you know, my oldest is, um, she's a worry wart and you know, gets nervous when things, uh, you know, if she's doing a swim race at the local swim team, you can see her shaking her hands and getting nervous. And then, um, you know, thinking about everything that could go wrong. And then my, my daughter underneath her, who's eight, is just like, bring it let's go you know and you're like i've raised you the exact same like why is she all nervous over there so it's um yeah it's just been it's just been interesting with that so we i try to talk to their my my two girls are eight and nine and um you know i can start having conversations with them about that I, about the mental side of you know it, whatever you do it doesn't matter if it's sport or or school or whatever whatever comes into your life everything's all mental so um you know, David, I, I, good. like i want to jump in with you patrick here because i think this past year your role with anaheim was a little different and yeah. even at, at at the top level the highest level you can you can attest to some of your conversations with your own teammates this year about it's still it's a work in progress even at the highest level is it not oh absolutely I, I would say my whole career i was still progressing mentally yeah. yeah I was always trying to grow and I think that's the driver to the game I mean to any athlete it's, it's, a, it's their mental makeup and um, their resilience when things go bad and not not getting too high not getting too low and, and understanding that's a long grind and um, you know decompressing after a playoff series or rivalry night you know we're playing LA somewhere you know, those games are, are emotionally very draining and you got to come down from that. And then you got to reset for the next day. <laughs> then you're playing the, another great opponent. So, um, yeah, I think my dad and brother hit on it. It's that six inches between your ears that drives everything. And, um, but I don't, I don't think you ever get to a point and say, yeah, I got this. I'm all <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's, it's always a work in progress and, uh, you have to look at it that way. That's all. That's all I guess I have to say about, about that. That's really. Thanks, <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw it in. <laughs> oh, Glad man. Um, hey, Mike, can you talk about kind of your the culture that you want to set with your teams? And, you know, it could be at the pro level, but also, you know, you had a lot of experience at, you know, I would, I would say college hockey is more youth hockey than the pro, you know, how does that all work? And how did you, you know, want to build that? And how did you communicate that? Well, it's, a, we're talking about process. It's a, it, it's a, it's a long one to, to create a culture. Um, and I think it's probably one of the more important things that you, you do. So like last year, once again, I was going into a new situation with a new group, uh, didn't know the coaching staff. Uh, didn't know the players, uh, knew some by name, um, 
But one of the first things we did was kind of put our advertisement up on the wall, David, like, what am I about? And so we had a, a pyramid of success. We had quotes put up so that when we came from training camp from Columbus up to Cleveland, this was their first initial, okay, this is who we're about. And now we have to, we have to start the process of going through that. And, and I think sometimes, you know, there's no secret formula. You go back to what you believe and you, you share with them why you think this believe you, you, you sell it to them. You don't tell it to them because I think they want to know what's in it for them. And why is this going to work? How does this make us better? And I think once you go through that process, you have a couple games, you win, you lose, but you come back to it and you show that you're, you're going to work through this and then you have success and they understand why. So I think that, to do that, whatever that is for you as a head coach or a teacher, even in your classroom or a, a boss of a company, you've got to have that thought process of what is our culture going to be and then sell it to the people you work with to have them believe in it as you, as you work through day-to-day -day stuff. So, sorry, I was preparing an a, a end <laughs> slide. Um, no, that, that's really, you know, uh, Ben, you want to touch a little bit about that on, on your experiences with, you know, those different youth and, you know, you coached at, you know, Culver and some of these, um, coach with Ohio AAA Blue Jackets, but also was a coach with Miami. How did you approach it? Oh, it's, it's been fun. Like, you know, these last years, seven, eight years being out of the pro game, like trying to understand, all right, I've been a player for 30 years. Like, what is it? What does a coach actually do? Like, what, what, what is that all about? Like, what's learning? What's, what's everything, you know? And so it's been a fun journey for me to have these willing kids kind of join me in that, or, or, you know, kind of allow me to imprint some of my philosophies that I thought as a player seemed like a good idea and things that I've read and, and kind of use them to see how that works. And, um, I mean, for me, and, and this was part of our family growing up, like there's only two things that really matter at the end. Did you try your hardest and did you have fun? Those are the first two questions that we would talk to the boys this past year. You know, those are the two things that I expect. The third one that's not too far behind is make sure you're early for warm ups for the team meeting. Like if you show up late, like you just got fired, your girlfriend just dumped you, like you just got cut from a team. Like it's a, it's a life lesson that I we had some run-ins with our group this year, but they, they finally, I think they got it. And who knows if they did, but uh, don't be late, you know, number one. But, uh, but for me, it was just, it was about positive reinforcement. It was about uh, celebrating the good. It was about something bad happening, stopping it, correcting it, going back and doing it right. And not being soft, but being really, really upbeat and trying to give as much love and give as much energy and as much, instruction that matches the kids skill sets and that was really important for me because I think if I did that then the kids would know that I actually do care about their success and I'm actually invested in their future and invested in what I think our group is capable of and once and again in my limited limited youth coaching experience once you have that with a kid or with a team like all bets are off. Like then you're able to go to different places together because there's, there's that deep bond of trust of when you decide to push down on the gas and challenge them. I mean, I saw some stuff this year from our kids that again, like it would bring tears to my eyes to retell the stories because they go to places and do things that like awe you. And it'll be fun to do that at any level because I think you can get that response once you have that trust. And we talk about it. We send articles and watch All or Nothing on Amazon and <laughs> read about Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp and Eddie Jones and all these, you know, master coaches. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, how can we do that? And so I love learning about it. But at the end of the day, you want to positively impact somebody. And if they actually believe that you're there to help them, I think you can open up the door to do some neat stuff. That's awesome. That's really Patrick, are you going to coach once you're done playing hockey? I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> be I, I dipped cool. my toe in a little bit this year. I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to, um, Dallas Aikens was, and Bob Murray were nice enough to let me come in and um, help out with the team and home games this year. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it and 
got to be around the locker room and the guys, so it was fun. That's David, awesome. I have to give a little yeah. shout out to Mrs. E's. Ben talked about the two things that Ben asked his guys, have fun and work hard. That's that's the only thing she would say to the boys when she dropped them off at the rink. <laughs> when, when mothers would ask me, you know, Patrick playing in the league for whatever, 15 years, well, what do you say to him? I said, well, I say the same thing I said when he was a little boy. I said, okay, Patrick, be the hardest working guy out there. This, you say that to your son? Yeah. <laughs> You've been saying it for years. Yeah. Yep. That's really awesome. Beth, uh, or all of you, we're going to probably close down, but I really want to ask Beth, if you had to give some um, advice to the moms out there, you know, what would you tell them about having two sons playing hockey and, you know, your husband coaching hockey? I know, you know, it's hockey's life for a lot of these hockey players and hockey coaches. What would you give any advice to these moms? Uh, I guess I would say, you know, really let your kids lead you through it. Um, one of those mornings when we, you know, got up at 3.30 and we're in some coffee shop because the rink wasn't open at six o'clock and I think Washington, D.C. And, and Ben was just a little guy and he turned to me, he said, Mom, I love these mornings. And I thought, I just made the kids sit in the van with full <laughs> equipment on for three hours you know, because I wasn't going to leave home without like an elbow pad or something. You know? <laughs> um, but I, I think that would be my advice of let them lead you and then enjoy it with them. And I think that's what we were able to do as a family is we just enjoyed it together. And it just enhanced the experience, brought us closer. And it, it's been an awesome journey. So I guess that's what I would share. Uh, that's really great. And and then Mike, do you have anything that you would share to, you know, the, the hockey, hockey dads? You know, the, the one thing that came to my mind early and I'll be brief is um, to do something well in, in, in any aspect, like you have to have passion. And sometimes I think we squelch that passion by making it year round. Make sure you have balance, keep the passion don't squelch it. If it's there, nurture it by, yeah. by doing other things and having some balance in your life. That's so. really, that's really great. And I really appreciate spending the time all for you. And um, hopefully I know there's going to be a lot of people taking a lot out of this because this is real life, right? Like this is, this is a hockey <laughs> family. This is part of it and, and all of that. So thanks again, all of you. And I just want to thanks all, thank all the, the moms and the dads that help out with, you know, getting these kids to the, to and from the rink. I think it's a really cool thing. And we always want to thank them kids. If you're watching, make sure you thank your mom and dad for the time they spent or whoever, it doesn't matter. Whoever's helping you out. So thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Eve's family much appreciated and stay safe and stay healthy. That's a wrap.